If you want to know exactly how to be able to start your online fitness business, be able to get leads coming to you, get clients signing on board, you charging what you're worth and really building a business that has you doing the work that you love, earning the money that you want and really impacting the world, I want you to meet someone that was scrubbing toilets not that long ago and now is literally living around the world, being able to run an online business. And yeah, it's this dude right here, <laughs> Josh, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for being here, man. Coach Josh here. Great meeting you if you're just starting out. That's where I was literally five years ago. Chris isn't lying. I was making $10 per hour working as a face-to-face -face personal trainer in the United States. Completely lost. Had all the energy and intent in the world, but had no idea what to do with it. Okay, so if you're starting from scratch, or even maybe if you started, but you want to be able to grow faster, I think what we're going to be able to share with you, literally pulling back behind the scenes, the curtain, so you can see what it is, the important stuff. Because let's be perfectly honest, there is a thousand and one things that we could be doing to grow an online business, but that does not mean that there is a thousand and one things that we should be doing to grow a business. It's actually only just a few number of things, and that's what we're going to show you in this episode right now. So Josh, Let's go back to the days of you wanting to start your online fitness business. Why was that? Why did you actually want to start? I wanted to have fun every day. Like, honestly, the real answer is I just wanted to enjoy work mm. because I had so many at that time adults in my life that would be yearning and waiting for Friday night to come around and then dreading Sunday evening because they know they have to go back to work on Monday. And I just, I didn't know what that was. I didn't know why that was. All I knew was I didn't want that. I wanted to have fun every single day, and as a kid, I enjoyed playing sports. I enjoyed, these are my favorite times of day, I say when I talk with coaches worldwide when I was a kid. Physical education, so I could basically just run around. Lunch, because I got to eat. <laughs> and then recess, which means I got to run around some more. And so, <laughs> so anytime I was moving, anytime I was hanging out with people I care about, I enjoyed that. So I wanted to find a way to be able to do that when I was an adult. All right, amazing. When you wanted to get started, what was the roadblock that you started to come up to? Where was your problems? <laughs> and by the way, the 1,001 things he was talking about earlier, I think I tried all of them. <laughs> and so the reason why I can do this video is because I made all the mistakes, so you don't have to. But ultimately, what I was told when I got my physical education degree, I was gonna be a gym teacher and I taught in four school districts as a PE teacher. I got certified as a personal trainer, got a bunch of qualifications, did a bunch of courses. The problem I ran into is when I actually became a practitioner, when I actually started doing the thing, I realized that being a coach wasn't just being a coach, it was actually being an entrepreneur and business owner as well. And no one warned me about that. So then I had this revelation of, all right, now I'm on the gym floor training clients. Well, actually I need to get some clients before I can train anyone. So there was this marketing and sales element to coaching that I had no idea even existed. And then once I got there and started doing it, I didn't know how to do it, which is why I started doing the 1,001 different things. Yeah, okay, amazing. So this could definitely sound familiar because I know I went through something really similar. You get certified and then you're kind of like, okay, well, I need to get clients. How the hell do I get clients? But especially now, just specifically talking online right now, what was the, what was the thing that actually got you to start getting clients? Because I'll be perfectly honest, and I'm gonna to have to interject real quick. Yep. When Josh signed up as a client not that long ago, uh, you're, you're a fabulous dude, really nice guy, but he didn't pull the trigger. And I think I actually wanna talk about that first. Yep. Why didn't you pull the trigger when you first started? I didn't know exactly what to do. And because I didn't feel like there was initially a path laid out for me, exactly step one, step two, step three, I felt like I was just wandering around. So I was busy, I was doing stuff, but nothing was happening. So I think the first thing was lack of clarity. And then that lack of clarity turned into me just second guessing everything. Am I doing the right thing? Am I meant for this? Should I just go get a steady nine to five job and be safe like everyone else in my life? Or should I actually do it? So like the lack of commitment started from lack of clarity, but then I actually got clarity and I was actually starting to get scared of my potential. What if I really got my act together? What if I really started helping people? What if I really started being confident with who I was and expressing myself? I remember my first social media videos. First of all, it took me weeks and weeks before I even picked up the camera and started yeah. even shooting content. And then when I started to make content, it was awful. I wasn't sold on what I was doing. So I didn't know my own value and worth as a coach as well. But yeah, lack of clarity, lack of commitment, everything probably holding you back right now. Amazing. So when it did start to click, yes. what was that that made it click? Yes. So this is what I actually did. I started just doing the repetitions. Yep. 
Okay, so sometimes coaches, and I've done a thousand consultations with coaches worldwide just this year, and sometimes these coaches think I have to feel ready or everything has to be perfectly set in stone and in place before I actually do anything. It's the exact opposite. Yeah. You will gain more faith, you'll gain more confidence, you'll gain more momentum by doing the thing. So it wasn't even about trying to be perfect right away. I just started doing stuff. Yeah. I just started pumping out more videos. Yes, my first sales call was the worst thing you would ever listen to <laughs> in your entire life. But if you think of like any other skill, like a writer, no one's first book was that great. No. No musician's first song was even that great. Actually, uh, Professor Cameron Hayes or someone like that, Jordan Hayes, totally gonna butcher the name, but he actually um, put together a study called The 10 Years of Silence. Mm. And he found that when people actually got skilled, it was after 10 years of actually doing that skill set. But most people will never do enough repetitions, and I'm not saying it's gonna take a decade before you ever yeah. get momentum, but the fact is you need to put in the reps. Yeah. So when I started putting out content, yes, it was terrible, but guess what? It started to attract the type of people I wanted to work with, mm. and leads eventually started to come through. At beginning of sales, I wasn't great at sales, but I just kept going, I kept doing the repetitions within a framework, and I got better at sales. Same thing with delivery of coaching, particularly online. Maybe you've coached face-to-face, -face, but you've never coached online. Guess how you're gonna get better at doing online coaching? Actually doing the damn thing. So I would say I started getting results when I actually started taking action. Imperfect action, not perfect action. Okay, so what we can take from that immediately is everything that we're actually sharing, take action on that. And especially when it comes down to the three key systems that I believe, and I think yeah. this guy believes as well, that you, I, Josh, we all need to actually grow a successful online business is we need a system one to bring in leads, system two to convert those leads to clients, and system three to actually coach them in a way that you enjoy and get some great results as well. And you said something before, it's like when you started taking action, yeah. the leads started to come in and the right people started to come in. So let's talk about that because I think one of the most important things you need to understand is number one, who are the people that you want to actually attract in because you want to be magnetic towards the right people and you want to be repulsive towards the wrong people. So when it comes to actually choosing a target market, where do you think coaches go wrong? Oh my gosh, they are doing what they see other coaches doing and they yeah. pick their target market, they pick their really their business based on obligation. Yeah. Not on energy, not on passion, yeah. not on intention. It's just like this random thing. Well, everyone, <laughs> Cal and I were talking about this. I'll give you the PG version of the conversation <laughs> coach Cal and I had the other day. Everyone and their grandmother is talking about working with busy professionals oh, yeah. right now. Yeah. First of all, who's not busy? And if anyone has a job, there's some form of professional. Yeah. It's so vanilla. In other words, this is a real hardcore example of what we we're just mentioning right here with the target market stuff. Who do you actually want to work with? If you could have 50 of this type of person, who would it be? And because you're starting from scratch, you may not know, but start even pen and paper. Start writing out some of the characteristics of the clients that you would like to have. For example, let's get really nitty gritty on this stuff. I love working with people that ask questions yeah. because it really triggers to me that there's a level of curiosity and that they have the intention of trying to get better. Yeah. Right? Some of my favorite people, this guy asks a lot of questions. I ask a lot of questions. Like, hey, what's going on here? I wanna learn, I wanna grow. I love people that are good communicators. So I love when a client is capable of saying, hey Josh, I'm really not sure about this right now, or hey, I'm lacking some motivation, what do you do when you're feeling a little bit low? Or hey Josh, should I have white rice or brown rice? And then I tell them, hey, I'm just glad you're not eating McDonald's. Yeah. Um, I love when people ask questions, I love when people can communicate, and I love when people can try to take personal responsibility for their situation. If someone's always making excuses, if someone is always trying to point the finger at some external thing, that turns me off, man. And I'm not perfect with this like you aren't either, but when I can have people that are actually trying to get the result that's really important to me. Guess who I resonate with? Because I was a skinny little guy back in the day. I resonate with guys that want to build muscle. I want to resonate with guys that don't feel like real men because they don't have the body and really the confidence that they've always wanted. So guess who my first target market was? Guys that are kind of in that 20 to 30 year old range like myself at the time and like me still now that wanna build muscle, that are probably very um, driven and intent about like trying to move forward in their life. So yeah, they do end up being kind of like the business guy, entrepreneurial type people. Guess what? I basically wanna hang out with 30 of me's yes. and coach those people. So who is that for you? If you had the choice, you know, you could do the traditional marketing path of like, what's their age? Where are they from? Yeah. That kind of stuff. Yeah. But also think with a little more nuance of like, really, if I had the choice, if I could have 30 to 50 of these people, who would they be? I think it's really, really important, especially because what we're not saying here is like what so many like business coaches and schools and stuff like that are trying to tell you to do when it comes to get a niche, get a target market. It's, oh, you've got to have 
uh, between 35 and 46 year old males that have got red hair and blue eyes and earn over $46,000 a year and that are left-handed. No, that's not what we're saying at all. What we're saying is there's really just two things that you need to understand when choosing a target market. One is what are they interested in? And two, what's the key dream come true result that they want? If you can get really clear on just those two things, then it goes into the next key step of making sure you can build your online fitness business, which is being able to produce Mm -hmm. content, kind of like what we're trying to do right here, but you getting your face, your message out in front of those exact right people. So where are you seeing coaches go wrong with this? If you try to freestyle your content, it's not gonna go well. You have to follow a system, you have to follow a duplicatable and replicatable framework. For example, and I don't blame you for not knowing this because no one has probably ever taught it to you before, which is why Chris and I are sweating in this gym right now trying to teach it to you. Um, The battle-tested marketing strategy is a podcast I shot. Just go listen to that. The 4P framework is something we actually teach to our clients. This is like a real framework that shows you how do I make a post? How do I actually make a video? How do I post something on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, the platforms that you're probably posting on? I would start with that, but the main problem is 100%, Chris, people aren't following a framework because they probably don't even know a framework exists. Yeah, okay, amazing. So we've gone target market, now we're putting out a message to actually start attracting in the right type of people. Then the next step is we need to start being able to turn these people that are interested in seeing you, how do we get them actually into your clients as well? What's the process of setting up their sales pipeline? Yes, so let's think about just high level, zoom back out because coaches might be hearing this for the first time ever, marketing. Marketing's job is very simple. Create awareness that you exist and that you're awesome, and then pass the baton to the sales process. Now, right now, you are the marketer, you are the salesperson, you are the coach, but you have to think about these different hats as if they were separate roles within your business. Because in any other business, not this solopreneur, um, bootstrapped, startup type thing, those are separate jobs that are filled by full-time workers. And the reason why this is frustrating is because this is a skill set and this is really a job that you've never done before. So marketing, gain awareness, and then get them into the sales process. Now sales process. Sales is the bridge between marketing and delivery of coaching. If you don't have it, all of this hard work that we do in our content and our marketing kind of goes to waste. So sales process, very simple. We talk about the two-step sales call system. We did a session on this, how to sell five $1,800 coaching packages every single week. That's nine grand a week worth of coaching sold. That's 36K worth of coaching on a monthly basis being sold. If you have any interest in doing any of that, (laughs) also go watch that coaching session, totally free. It doesn't cost you a dollar and it's worth a whole lot more, it's worth 36K a month. (laughs) Okay, so go watch that. But two-step sales call process. The first call, it's a quick 10, 15 minute chat, we call it a triage call, where you're basically qualifying to determine really if and how you can help the person that you're talking to. In order for you to actually help the people that you wanna help, you've gotta make sure you're filtering out and repelling was the exact word that Chris used and being repulsive to everyone else. You cannot just accept anyone into your coaching program. Because if you do, here's what's gonna happen. 49% of you, when they're inside the coaching program, 49% of you will be focused on helping the person. And 51% of you, this is the real stuff by the way, no one's talking about this, 51% of you will be focused on hating that person because you know you shouldn't have brought them on in the first place. And because you you resent yourself, you are starting to resent them. And that's not fair to them and that's not fair to you. So first call, qualifying. Really digging deep, finding out what their problems and pain points are. And I call the triage call, getting ammunition for you as the salesperson because you're not just a coach, you are an entrepreneur and salesperson, own that. You're getting ammunition for you to use on them in the second call. So the second call is the closing call. This is the program. This is how we actually help you get those great results. And this is how we actually get credit card details, get an agreement signed and get a deal done. You need to be great at sales if you want to build a real business. This is really good because if you think about it, especially that first call, which is so, so important because you technically can't do anything going into the second call unless you actually triage someone properly. Because in the medical profession, what is it called when a doctor doesn't actually go through and try to find out the information needed to prescribe something? If a patient just walks in and they just prescribe something straight off the bat, take this drug. Do you know what that's called? Malpractice. It is malpractice. So the whole idea is you just want to make sure, hey, where are you? What's missing? What's broken? What is it that you want to achieve? Why do you think that you're not achieving the results so far? What is it that you want from me? These are literally, those are literally four questions to use in your triage call to make sure that you can then prescribe to them what it is that's needed as well. So let's actually talk about 
one of the final key steps, which is the prescribing. Once they've actually prescribed and once they've signed on board, this is really important. You need to be able to have a coaching program that is going to get your results, the client's results in the easiest, fastest, cheapest way possible. Now that does not mean that you charge the lowest bottom dollar. What you mean is you wanna be able to have the highest amount of value in it. Before we dive into this, I've just got to say one more thing. In this day and age right now, especially with everything that's going on in the world, especially with how many people are literally turning to online coaching, it is an absolute gold rush for you to be able to build your online business right now, which is amazing. But the problem is the spoils are going to go to the coaches that are delivering the highest amount of value. And they are going to get exponential amounts more than the people doing a mediocre result. Would you agree with that one? One million percent, yes. Uh -huh. So you've got to figure this out and you've got to make sure that you have this in place. And this isn't about throwing more stuff into your coaching program. It's actually the opposite. Let's say someone's climbing up a mountain. Do you want to give them a huge rucksack and just throw tons of stuff on their back and weigh them down? No, you want to give them a little bum bag with a couple of little things and be able to give them what they need as they go up that mountain. And so that's how you've got to be able to look at your coaching program. How do you best help them go through it? So what do you think, Josh? Yeah, absolutely. Simplicity is the key with this. Once again, after doing such a high volume of coaching, I answered 22,000 emails within a 24 month period of time and I've coached 15,000 people. So wait, 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 let's stop on that one more time. <laughs> let's rewind. How many people have you coached? 15,200. All right, so let's listen. Okay, I literally just don't want you to waste all the time, energy and money that I did. So literally just take my advice. This is not for my ego. This is for the speed of you building a business in life that you want. First of all, I don't mean to keep plugging our other videos, but we've gone so deep on each of these areas so many different times. Elisha and I, who tripled his business in the last 12 months, and Cal, who has a team of seven team members at the age of 23, have talked about the value of onboarding processes. So what happens, in other words, normal people terminology, not business terminology, what happens after someone is sold and actually getting them inside the coaching program? I would say the onboarding is like that first seven day period right when someone joins the program. How do you have all of the technicalities taken care of? From the agreement to first payment actually going through to them having like a kickoff call or a session with you where you get them started on how to actually begin the program. How do you give them the nutrition and workouts? Onboarding is so key. We'll link the other videos for our onboarding stuff. So you can literally just follow it step for step. I can literally give you the onboarding checklist that you can go through. It's an editable PDF, which means you just click on the bullet points as you go along. I'll give it to you for free. I'm not a hard guy to find. Get in touch with me. I'll give it to you. <laughs> so after onboarding, this is all you got to do. I would have something set up. There's a million softwares out there to be able to get someone the bare bones of nutrition and workouts. Yeah. So as long as the client knows what to do, that's a big check mark that we can be excited about. Then the main thing, this is where coaches go wrong and this is where I think they go a little bit uh, confused and frustrated with this process. Communication. What does the communication look like between the coach and the client? When communication is not good or not consistent or not aligned, that's where the gap between coach and client starts to begin. And the farther that gap is, that's where we talk about resentment again. And that's where people get lost. That's where clients get unmotivated. That's when you lose clients. That's why people sign up once and don't sign up again. It's probably somewhere in the communication. So for example, day to day, make this real practical for you. Through the software that you use to actually give your clients the workouts, day to day, use the messaging tab of that app or software. So you set up two 10 minute blocks. No one's gonna give you this specific advice, by the way. Yeah. This is like really nitty gritty stuff. Two 10 minute blocks in your day. For example, from 9 a.m. to 9, 10 a.m. where you respond to your client's questions. Then you come back maybe one time in the afternoon and go from 4 p.m. to 4, 10 p.m. and you answer any cleanup questions that you got between 9, 10 a.m. and then 4 p.m. So that way, Monday through Friday, everyone's getting a response once or twice per day. Your clients aren't gonna ask you that many questions. Mm. Once they have the workouts, once they have the nutrition, it's gonna be those simple in and out questions that take 10 or 15 seconds to respond to. Day to day, that's awesome. Week to week, and I will give this to you. I will give this to you. It's my <laughs> weekly check-in sheet. So if you do the math on 15,200, where a majority of them were one-on-one -on -one coaching clients, I don't even want to start doing the math on how many <laughs> weekly check-ins I've done. You can see I'm sweating. It's because I'm thinking about how many weekly check-ins I've done in my career. I'll give you the weekly check-in sheet. So for example, have all of your clients on one day of the week, yeah. send the completed weekly check-in sheet. So we are clear, once again, communication on when that's going to be sent back to you. Yeah. Treat it like a homework assignment as if you were a teacher. And I'll say, hey, Mr. Vago is not gonna be very happy with you, Mr. or Mrs. Client, if you send your homework assignment to me incomplete or completed but late. So there's clear expectations because there's clear communication. For example, every Friday for years, my clients sent me the weekly check-in sheet. And then on Saturday morning, the next day, I would give them feedback. 
Guess where I gave them feedback based on the weekly check-in? Inside the same way I communicate with my clients day to day inside the messaging tab. It could be email, it could be some sort of a Facebook group, but it's gotta be one place. Don't send communication yeah. to a million different so places. Long. Last thing, month to month. When I think about the last 12 to 24 months in the context of the world, I think one of the big things everyone has been missing, myself included, it's why I came to Bali, a sense of community. Yeah. And so month to month, maybe you could jump on and do a group coaching call with your 12, your 24, your 36, your 40 members and do a group coaching call where half of that coaching call could be you answering Q&A. So you tell everyone ahead of time communication, you tell everyone ahead of time, bring their top two or three questions and you jam with them on a group call over Zoom. So relevant. And then maybe the second half of that call, you go into a five, 10, 15 minute teaching piece where you pull out the whiteboard and you go through the top three principles to do X, Y, Z. Yeah. And you're basing that teaching session based around the problems and pains and what your clients actually want. So back in my day, the target market, top three ways for skinny guys to get jacked. Yeah. My guys, we get so excited when I jump on a group call and we're talking about the ways for skinny guys to get jacked. So day to day, week to week, month to month communication, as well as just giving them the bare bones with nutrition and training in the first seven to 14 days of them being on board, that's how you deliver online coaching. This is brilliant. This is so good. I'm so happy we've been able to share this with you today. And this is the thing, like watch this entire episode again and make sure that you actually go through it. Because what we're also gonna do is I want you to be able to see behind the scenes with Josh and also a handful of other coaches with exactly what they're doing to be able to grow and build their fitness businesses as well. So there's a couple of cases. This has been valuable to you, please click like. Also, please make sure that you subscribe because I don't want you to miss out on the upcoming episodes that we've got for you as well. And then what I'll do is in the description, I'll pop a link to the actual training that you'll get with the behind the scenes so that you can go through it. And it's literally gonna go through all of the steps to going from how to get leads, how to get clients, how to coach them, and then also how to scale your business so it can start running without you being there doing all the heavy lifting as well. I'm so thankful for you, Mr. Vago. I'm so thankful for you. Thank you for being here in this episode. I'm really looking forward to seeing you in the next one.